The word Islam is the synonym of the noun Aslama, which means resigned or submitted. In the context of religion, it means to submit to one's will to the will of God. Islam encourages one to submit to the will of God in exchange to acquire peace and contentment in this life and in the hereafter. Only when one submits to God by believing in Him and obeying His commandments does one achieve an innate and lasting sense of security, true peace of mind, and surety of the heart. The word Islam is derived from an Arabic root word which means peace, purity, safety, salutation, submission, acceptance, surrender, and obedience. With the act of submission, one would attain peace within themselves and in accordance with their creator and their fellow beings. The religion of Islam demonstrates that only through the doing of good and the seeking of God's pleasure can one find true happiness, peace, and contentment in this life. Man cannot live peacefully or successfully without religion, and this religion cannot be man-made. Religion has to be completely divine in nature, without any human altercation. The only revelation in the world today that still rings good and is true is the final book of God, the Holy Quran. All other traditional revelations were either lost in the annals of time or underwent endless man-made modifications that rendered them impractical for mankind. Islam is a monotheistic religion, a faith in which followers admit and recognize the existence of one supreme God and being, who is almighty, all-powerful, all-knowledgeable, all-loving. Islam stresses the existence of only one God, the same God of Prophet Adam, Noah, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, David, Solomon, Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad. Islam demonstrates the fact that through the centuries God has continued to bless mankind with holy prophets who come bearing the same general message. The message is simple, one should worship God alone without any partners, love him with all his or her heart and follow his commandments. God is an entity who is worthy of worship and veneration since he is the creator of everything. No other being is worthy of worship. This has always been God's message to mankind, as conveyed through the words of prophets and messengers. Prophet Moses declared to the people of Israel, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our Lord is one Lord. Deuteronomy 6.4 a full 1500 years later, Prophet Jesus repeated the same message to the people of Israel. The first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Mark 12:29. Finally, 600 years later, Prophet Muhammad called out across the hills of Mecca. And your God is one God. There is no deity worthy of worship except Him, the beneficent, the especially merciful. Quran 2.163 Throughout history, anyone who practiced monotheism by submitting to the will of God was considered a Muslim. Human beings have been practicing Islam since the creation of Prophet Adam. Throughout the ages, God sent prophets and messengers to guide and teach their own nations. All prophets, furthermore, preach the same general message to their nations. They preach that one should believe in one God and follow his laws to acquire and attain peaceful living. The prophets preach that submitting to God would bring peace and contentment to one's heart in this world and would be awarded the attainment of God's kingdom and grace in the next world. No other is worthy of worship, not the sun, the moon, nor any idol. Contrary to popular belief, Islam is not a new religion that came into existence 1400 years ago, back in the 7th century. Islam has existed since the first moment that man set foot on earth. Truly the religion with Allah is Islam, Quran 3.19. In fact, Islam is the only religion that God ever commanded humankind to follow. Islam therefore is the only true religion that has ever been accepted to and ordained by God. Allah states in the Quran, And whoever seeks a religion other than Islam, it will never be accepted of him, and in the hereafter he will be one of the losers. Quran 3.85 the final prophet of mankind, Prophet Muhammad, was not the founder of Islam, as many people mistakenly think. Rather, he was sent as the final prophet, one delivered from the hand of the Almighty God to convey his message to our nation, the final nation. Islam is not a religion solely based on creeds, customs, and rituals. Rather, Islam is a complete way of life that guides man in every field and aspect of this sometimes perilous existence. Islam teaches the art of living, 
how one should guide and navigate his or her life. Islam instructs us about the things in this life that are beneficial to us, as well as that which is ultimately destructive and that should be avoided. Islam guides followers in every aspect of their lives. Islam emphasizes how the belief in God empowers one to become more righteous, obedient, moral, and good overall, rejecting all forms of evil in the process. Islam modifies a person's thoughts, actions, and life perspective, helping them to see this world as it really is and to prepare them for the afterlife. Accordingly, Islam neither neglects the needs, wants, hopes, and aspirations of this worldly life, nor does it abandon the preparation needed to ready oneself for the hereafter, where man shall live eternally. Islam takes the middle path. It is better for one to ponder deeply about his or her future and to live a good life in anticipation of his or her upcoming eternal life. Accordingly, each person is expected to devote some time in his or her present life to ponder what will occur in the life to come. Islam is a religion based on faith, love, compassion, peace, mercy, goodwill, and ethical treatment to all. Islam is a religion based on self-righteousness in which Muslims strive to perform good deeds towards the attainment of their own salvation and the ultimate goal of entering heaven with God's mercy in the afterlife. A person that submits his or her will to Almighty God and follows his commandments is called a Muslim. A Muslim is one who does not follow his own desires, lusts, and impulses. A Muslim is one that does right, stands for good, and loves God with all his or her heart. The act of knowing and loving God is the only thing that can bring true contentment in the soul. If one does not have a relationship with his creator, his soul will always be seeking something to fill the emptiness in his heart. True contentment is derived only from the fullness and purity of the heart and soul. All of the wealth and material goods of this world could never be able to fill the emptiness of a vacant soul. Happiness is not derived from the gathering of possessions. True wealth is derived only through the richness and contentment of the heart and soul. And the only true poverty is the poverty of the heart. Islam answers the fundamental questions that malign the conscience of every human being. Why was I created? What am I doing here? What is the purpose of my existence? Islam provides a meaningful purpose to one's life in this world, as well as the guidance needed to fulfill one's life purpose. Other religions do not answer the big questions of life, such as who made us? Why are we here? And where are we headed? Man cannot live peacefully in this world without knowing who he is, who has created him, where he is headed, what his role is, and how to fulfill that role to the best of his ability. The answer to these questions has been implanted in man's inner nature by the Almighty. However, the human intellect alone cannot answer these questions unaided. Man needs divine guidance to discover these all-important spiritual answers. The answers lie in Islam. Islam teaches people that they were created in order to worship Him, and that the basis of all true worship is God consciousness, a concept that includes the fear of God, the love of God, His recognition, and piety. Since Islam encompasses all aspects of life and ethics, God consciousness is encouraged in the execution of all human affairs. Islamic worship is not limited to religious rituals such as praying and fasting. Rather, Islam makes it clear that everyday human acts such as eating, drinking, greeting others, sitting, learning, dressing, sleeping, giving charity, etc are all acts of worship if they are done for God alone and in accordance with his divine laws and guidelines. The teachings of the Qur'an and Prophet Muhammad can supply both ethereal mercy and healing for the human soul. They provide the ultimate guidance for leading a productive, successful life. Islam, in short, demonstrates the best way of living life. God created a man to be a follower and a worshiper. If he is not devoted to God, he will devote himself to others whether they are false gods, saints, idols, philosophers, etc. Following them by way of thoughts and actions that would lead him astray. In Islam, Muslims do not worship creations of God, such as the sun or an idol. 
rather they worship the Creator Himself. Islam recognizes that God has created humans with an innate eagerness and ability to see God, to recognize and to understand the existence of the Creator. The greatest thinkers of the past never would deny the various signs that point to the existence of their Creator. However, what led many people of the past astray is the lack of knowing God properly and the fact they do not have access to a true and preserved revelation originated from God. God poses an argument in the Quran stating, or were they created by nothing, or were they creators themselves, or did they create the heavens and earth, rather they are not certain. The objective of these verses is for mankind to reflect and ponder on the fact that they could not have come into existence from nothing, nor could they have created themselves. Additionally, the skies and the earth are fashioned perfectly, hence they originated from the act of a creator. The miracles of nature, the earth, the universe are all enough evidence to show mankind that there is something bigger than us. Mankind does not need God to show them anything more in order for them to believe. The world is already big enough of a miracle. Surely these words will answer the questions and address the doubts of people who ponder, people who think, people who reflect. Islam states that God does not force anyone to submit to his will. He has laid out a clear path for human beings, while making it known that humans must choose from two paths. The straight path that leads to heaven, or the erroneous way which leads to hell. Human beings are free to make their own choices. Islam does not force anyone to submit. A human who chooses to worship God, pledging their devotion to Him and obeying His commandments, has grasped the firm handhold and eternal bond that will never break. On the other hand, whoever denies God's existence or worships anyone other than Allah stands to face eternal punishment in the hereafter. Life is a test of one's faith. God the Almighty, out of His abundant love and mercy for mankind, has not left us in pure darkness, leaving us alone and enlightened to discover the right path through the frailties of guesswork or trial and error. God gifted mankind with an intellect and a logical mind that can reason, ponder, and reflect. Additionally, God bestowed upon mankind the gift of divine guidance that outlines the criterion for the ultimate truth and knowledge. One is expected to use his or her intellect and reason to contemplate and recognize God's signs, to build a relationship with Him, and to seek and follow His guidance. These signs serve to speak loudly, without the need of speaking to God directly, which would not require any effort or reflecting on the part of the human. The believers will live a peaceful, contented life in this world, and be awarded heaven in the hereafter. Whoever does righteousness, whether male or female, while he is a believer, we will surely cause him to live a good life, and we will surely give them the reward, according to the best of what they used to do. Quran 16:97. The disbelievers, the rejecters of the truth, the deniers of God, will live a narrow, depressed life in this world, and abide in the hellfire forever and the hereafter. And whoever turns away from my remembrance, indeed he will have a depressed life, and we will gather him on the day of resurrection blind. Quran 21:24. The goal of Islam is for one to become a true servant of God. Judgment day is a blink away. You live and you die, and then you will inevitably be resurrected to face your Lord, who will judge you based on the way you lived your life. Indeed, we belong to Allah. Our Prophet narrated, whoever guides another to a good deed will get a reward similar to the one who performs it. So please like, subscribe, and share this video. Assalamu alaikum.